Hey guys, Crystal here from the Elite Hair Salon and Barbershop. Um, today's video is actually going to be one that was kind of requested. And I feel like it's a topic that um, a lot of people kind of don't talk about. So this is typically for hairstylists, um, students who are about to come into the business, or maybe if you're even a salon owner and you want to be able to pass this information down to your stylist or potential stylists or students or interns or whoever that is under you. So like I said, today's video, we're going to cover the difference between a suite, booth rental, and commission. And I feel like this is a topic that should be addressed by a lot of stylists before they jump headfirst into something. And we always feel like, like here in the South in Orlando, commission is not a big thing in the African American community or the ethnic community. And I, the reason I say that is because everybody wants to be their own boss and feel like they're doing their own thing. But at the end of the day, they don't want to do the work that is required to even be able to say you're your own boss. So this video will kind of give you a little bit of clarity um, as to what I mean by the three different types. And I hope this video actually resonates with someone. And of course, if this is a video that is of value to you, please hit that subscribe button down below and hit that thumbs up button as well. So let me know that I'm doing a great job. And if there's something that I need to address or maybe I didn't answer for you in the video, be sure to comment down below and I'll do my best to answer you. So let's get straight into it. What is a suite, what is booth rental, what is commission? So a suite is typically inside of a bigger building, which is typically a building of beauty professionals. This is a very popular thing that is now coming about throughout the United States and probably in other countries. So if you're watching from another country, this might also be popular where you are. I just don't know that. Suites are typically rooms that are sometimes 10 by 10, maybe 10 by 15, maybe even a 10 by 20, which is very rare. The suite basically is your area, your salon, your makeup room, your lash room, your massage therapy area, or your um, whatever beauty portion of the industry that you contribute to. This is your space. It allows you to be able to decorate the way you want to, it allows you to be able to run your business the way you want to within the parameters of whatever contract you're in with that particular facility. Every facility is different. There are high end levels and there are low end levels. The difference in Orlando, which is where I am based, um, is there are both. And then we also have in between. My salon is not a suite salon. I do not offer a private room in my salon. And the only reason being is I don't have the space. Some salons do turn like a storage area or some area that they're not utilizing into a suite area for those stylists who want to be, you know, by themselves and don't want to really be under the scrutiny of being a booth renter or commission stylist. They want their own space. Typically, suites cost more. And when I say cost more, I'll give you an example. There's a suite here in Orlando where it's a more higher end suite and the rent for a maybe 10 by nine, 10 by 10 room, will run you about $270 or more per week. Now, that's a lot. So if you really do the calculation, and let me pull out my little um, calculator here. Let's do the calculation. $270 times four weeks totals $1,080. Now, the good thing about a suite, which is one of the pros, is you do not pay electricity, you do not pay for water. Typically, you don't even pay for Wi-Fi or cable access. 90% of the time, all of those are included. Some places do not include some things, but it just depends on where you are. Within the parameters of your contract, some places may say, hey, you're only allowed to paint a certain color. Some pieces may say, hey, you're only allowed to use or utilize a certain amount of dryers. Um, you are limited to one, maybe two shampoo bowls, the max. Typically, you're limited to one. Most suites, the shampoo bowl is attached to your station. So you are basically stuck with you by yourself, and it's very hard to have an assistant at, the, at those kind of places. Yes, you are your own boss. Yes, you are responsible for your own advertising. You are responsible for cleaning your unit. You are responsible for general liability, which some places do include that in the actual rent. Um, you are responsible basically for everything except for the utilities and the shell of the building. You must decorate. You must furnish all of that good stuff. That is a suite. Now, I've done the suite life before. 
I've done booth rental before. I've done commission before. I'm now a salon owner. So I know the different parameters. Sweet Life was okay. Um, you do kind of run into the, the realm of being alone a lot because you're not talking to anyone. You're in this room by yourself. If you're a loner and you like to just work at your own pace, you don't want to deal with anybody but your clients and you, that might work for you. But you're going to pay a little bit more and sometimes put yourself in a position where you're making less because you're paying more or you have to increase your pricing some clients don't want to do that and these are clients that may have been with you for 10 years they don't want to pay that additional money to secure that area for you so that's something you should think about when you are thinking of going into the suites now the pros of the suites is yes you are by yourself um, two you are able to do what you want to do within the parameters of your contract I'm going to keep stating that because a lot of these places really scrutinize what they allow you to do in there, meaning how many people you're, you're if you're allowed to use their waiting area for your clients. Sometimes you can't multitask. Now you're limited to one, maybe two people within a certain amount of time because you don't have that space, different things like that. Um, but the other pros are it does typically look very nice. Now, the lower end ones might not be so great, but the higher end ones, typically you're you're. You have state-of-the-art furniture, Belvedere, whatever company, your waiting area, the walk-in. It's just a great appeal and great atmosphere. Sometimes the atmosphere does not match your pocket. So think about that as well. Let's go into booth rental. So let's do some um, characteristics of booth rental. Booth rental typically is you are in a open salon atmosphere. You rent your booth. Now, Sweet Life Booth Rental, they both require typically a weekly booth rental or suite or rent payment. Um, Sweet Life, typically your rent comes directly out of your bank account. Booth Rental, typically you can pay cash or it comes out of your bank account depending on the setup of the salon that you're in. Booth Rental, you are adhering to your station, your chair, your mirror. You have your back bar area. Sometimes storage is not given unless it's just into your cabinet where your styling station is. So that's another thing that you want to think about. Same thing with the sweet life. You don't typically have a lot of storage unless you're in one of the higher end places that they give you storage. So you have to fulfill that need for the storage area. With booth rental, you provide your own supplies. Same thing as the sweet life. Um, you kind of have to adhere to the salon schedule of open and close. Not every salon is going to allow you 24 hour access for you to be able to say that I'm a booth renter. I can walk in whenever I want. Some salons are closed on Sundays completely. Some salons are closed on Mondays completely. If something's going on in the salon, you have to adhere to that and say, well, I can't work on Tuesday because they're working in the salon. That's a part of booth rental. So you might want to think about that if there's access 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, another thing is your weekly rent. Weekly rent typically in booth rental salons are due on Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. Some days may be different depending on your area. You are responsible for your own advertising. You are responsible for your own business cards. You're responsible basically for everything that pertains to you. You pay your rent. You adhere to the salon's policies. You are your own boss. You cover everything yourself. That's booth rental. Typically, 70% of the United States does booth rental salons. Um, and I'm going to say 70% within the African-American community. And please don't mock me for saying it that way, but that's just how it's been. Now, on the other scale, there are more um, salons that offer commission and commission only. And then sometimes they offer booth rent and commission. Or they might have all three, commission, booth rent, and the sweet life. So it's just different in area. In my area, booth rental is the biggest thing. I can tell you that now. Let's go into the cons of booth rental. You are responsible for yourself, okay? You're responsible for your own general liability. You are responsible for your own advertising, your own cakes, your own towels, products. The only thing that the salon takes care of is the shell, the utilities. That's it. You're responsible for cleaning your own area. I mean, basically, it kind of coincides with the sweet life, except for the fact that you are adhering to a booth and not a big room that you are furnishing on your own. Typically, your furniture and everything comes equipped for booth rental, but you do have to follow the salon's rules in regards to children and seating and all of that good stuff. Let's talk about commission. A commission-based position is typically 
you work for the salon. You are responsible to make sure that your license is up to date. Um, you are paid on a weekly, sometimes bi-weekly basis. Sometimes the terms may differ. Your percentage may be 60-40, 50-50. Sometimes it may be where you provide your own product and your percentage of commission is higher or the salon provides the product and your percentage of commission is lower. Sometimes you have to hit a certain dollar amount for you to reach a certain percentage of pay on a service. So that kind of breaks down um, the pay structure of commission. It does differ in different places, like I said. Um, you typically have a schedule as a commission stylist, meaning your schedule is made by the salon owner, salon manager, supervisor, whatever the case may be, and you have to adhere to those times and be available and at work on time those times. You are not your own boss when it comes on to commission. Commission has different terms. So let's say I'll give you an example. Lisa works for the Elite Hair Salon and Barbershop as a commission stylist. I want Lisa at work Monday through Saturday from 6 to 6. Lisa's hours are 6 to 6. She must be there every Monday through Saturday from 6 to 6. She gets vacation time. She gets benefits. She gets all of that good stuff as a paid employee would on a 9 to 5 at a doctor's office or as a teacher, whatever the case may be. Um, products are provided. And if she hits a certain profit margin, let's say she hits $500 for the week, her commission will go up to 60% hers, 40% the salon. Then the amount of product that she uses on a weekly basis will be deducted from that. These are the different things that commission stylists have to deal with. And there's, I'm not going to say pros and cons to it, but I will say pros and cons. The cons to doing commission is you're not your own boss you have to adhere to a schedule. You're working based on the salon's time. The salon is your manager. The salon is your boss. The salon tells you what to do, how you can do it. If they want you to do things a certain way, that's what you have to do. If they want you to wear a certain thing, that's what you must wear. So that's commission. Suites, booth rental, you typically have a little more control. The suite life, you have the ultimate control. You have about 90% more control Awesome, 90%. You have about 90% control in the sweet life. The other 10% does go to the actual shell that you're working in, what their rules are. Booth rental, you have about 75% to 80% control. The other 25 to 20% goes to the salon rules, the hours of the salon, um, basically the salon telling you when you can and cannot be in the salon. So that's why I gave it a little bit less than the sweet life. Commission, you really have no control. And the reason I say that is because you are working for the salon. So you are on the payroll. You do what the salon tells you to do. The salon manager sets the rules. You don't set any rules. So I really kind of hope that that kind of breaks down the three different ones. If I had a choice of what, which one I would choose, it depends on your skill level and where you are in your career and what you want in your career. Starting out from school, I would most likely go into a commission salon. And the reason why I say that is because commission stylists typically, your training is paid, your products are purchased, your rent, your lights, your water, everything is paid. You don't have the, um, the worry of ensuring that you're paying rent, ensuring that you have product, ensuring that you're advertising, you know, all that good stuff. That's the only reason why I would start commission if I was a student going into a salon. Now, if I am a more seasoned stylist and I've been in the business maybe a year, maybe two years, or my clientele is just really steady for the past six months, I'd be a booth renter. Booth renter allows me to have control of my job. I'm still paying rent, but I'm making more money, so I'm not really worried. My rent is covered. If I am an exceptionally seasoned stylist, I have a steady clientele. I'm content with my marketing. I know my ins and outs of the business. I've done it all. Then I go to the sweet life. Sweet life, you have more control of your business. You know what you're doing. You don't need to work with anyone. You know where you're going. You know where you want to be. And then, of course, the ultimate goal is salon owner. Salon owner, now you have these three people working under you. So they're paying you. You are the shell. But there are some ups and downs to salon ownership because you have to be able to manage these people, these different situations, and know when to offer what to who and how. So I really hope this video um, really resonates with you if you're one of those people where you're just very confused on which one to do. 
Once again, my name is Crystal Williams. I am the owner of the Elite Hair Salon and Barbershop located here in Orlando, Florida. I really, really, really hope this video helps someone out there. And if it did, and if you already haven't done so, please give me a thumbs up down below and hit subscribe so you can see all the rest of my videos. And of course, if there's anything that I didn't cover or maybe you just want some tips on, my contact details are also down in the description box. I will talk to you guys soon. And of course, I have some new videos coming up, so keep looking out. I love you guys. Bye.